Good morning Amherst, talking today about equilibrium, more precisely dynamic equilibrium. People misconceive of uh, equilibrium, they think, oh, everything's equal, that's not true. The rates of reaction in the forward and reverse direction are equal. The rate of reaction, not the amount of product and reactant, that's not necessarily true, it's almost always not true. Okay, it's not about the amounts being equal. The net change in a system in equilibrium is zero. We've already talked about delta G being zero. So for every one you put in, another one comes out. One of the analogies I use is that if we were back in school and everybody in the building was just dying to take honors chemistry and there were you know two dozen seats in the classroom and everybody was in a seat, no seats are empty, and there's a line out the door for people who just dying to take this lecture on equilibrium, well, if one of you gets up and walks out, another person from outside the hall comes in and takes your seat, at any given time, I'm still teaching to a full room of, of students, and that change would be zero. Okay, equilibrium applies to what we call reversible reactions. Not all reactions can go backwards. When you have things like, you know, the evolution of a gas that escapes into the room or a precipitate uh, that might form, something that you can't force backwards, well, you're not going to be able to achieve equilibrium. But systems that can achieve equilibrium are ones that have reversible reactions. So what happens, if you look at this, this is a common type of graph that you'll see a lot. If this is your concentration expressed in moles per liter, and this is time, and these are your reactants, you start out with some amount of reactant, and you start out with no products. So the green here are reactants and the purple are products. Over time, you're using up your reactants, and then their concentration is going to level off. And as you form products, eventually that concentration is going to level off. And at some point, the slope for both of these lines equals zero. And the concentration stops changing. That's how you know you've achieved equilibrium. The concentration remains constant. So when the rate forward equals the rate reverse, the concentration of each of the species, they like to use that word, remains constant. Each species in the system appears to stop changing. At the molecular level, it's changing, but at the macroscopic level, if you were measuring the concentration, it would remain constant. That doesn't mean equal. So the equilibrium constant play on words there I guess, is an expression of K. It's a capital K this time. It's mathematically something that describes, well, what is my concentration of products relative to my concentration of reactants? So it's going to mathematically put them together. And by definition, KEQ is defined as the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. Now there are all kinds of Ks. KEQ. So there's going to be KA for acids, there are KBs for bases, there are um, KSPs, we'll get to in this unit for how much something dissolves, solubility product. There are all kinds of Ks. We'll get there. So if K is a number that's greater than 1, you're saying, well, I've got more product than reactant. I favor the forward reaction. I favor forming products more than I favor reactants. And the concentration of the products would be higher than the concentration of reactants. K would be bigger than 1. They say, well, it favors the forward reaction. I'd like to form products more than I like to form reactants. If K is less than 1, the opposite is true. So, yeah, I didn't use up much of my reactant, and I didn't form much product, but they leveled off here. My slope is 0. So I don't have much product relative to my reactant. If the product is lower than the reactant, K is less than 1. The system favors staying back on the left-hand side of the arrows. Um, it favors a reverse reaction. I suppose it's possible that the concentration of the products and the reactants could be equal, but it's highly unlikely. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna come across this, but if that were true, it would look like this. Those concentrations would be one line with the slope of zero, and K would be one, but that's, it's really, it's a common misconception, and I really don't want you to think along those lines. At equilibrium, the rates are forward, and the rates are constant, but they're probably not equal. So mathematically, how does this work out? Well, here's a simple system. A plus B, double arrows for equilibrium, goes to C plus D. Implies that you can go forward and you can go reverse. KEQ is the concentration of the products over the reactants. Here's C, here's D, they go up top. Here's A and B, they go on the bottom. These are multiplied together. It's never an addition or subtraction thing. So if it's a multiple choice question, if you see a plus or minus in there, just that's not the choice. Move on. If there are coefficients, 
If this was three C's, you'd have a C and a C and a C. If it was four D's, you'd have a D and a D and a D and a D. And they're all multiplied together. So C times C times C is C to the third power. And D times D times D times D is D to the fourth power. So you would have KEQ is C to the third power times D to the fourth power over A to the first times B squared. So the coefficients from the equation become exponents in the equilibrium expression. That's an important point. Now, before we go any further, we're talking about concentrations. The brackets mean molarity, moles per liter. It's a part over whole expression. That's great for gases and aqueous species. You can talk about moles of solute per liter of solution. You can talk about moles of gas per liter of you know, air, for example. But you can't express the concentration of a pure solid or a pure liquid. They're pure. The part and the whole are the same thing. So if you had the same thing, if you had part over whole, you'd have one. So you can't express the concentration of pure solids and pure liquids. So if I had a system here with gas and solid and gas and liquid, 1A gas plus 2B solid, arrows 3C gas and 4D liquid, if I plug that in, that would be C cubed over D to the fourth power times D to the fourth power over A to the first B squared, but D is 1 and B is 1 and 1 to the fourth power is 1 and 1 to the second power is 1 and 1 to any power is 1 so they just kind of drop out of the equation so KEQ would just simply be the reactants and products that are in the gas or aqueous phase count and if it's solid or liquid it just drops right out of the equation so it's C cubed over A So I need you to turn now, we're going to jump around in these worksheets and they're not numbered all that well. You're going to turn to this worksheet. It says up the top, gas equilibrium, KEQ, homogeneous gas phase, KEQ Roman numeral one. And we're going to do a couple problems from it, so just a, a touch of homework. We're going to do up to and including number six. So we'll do two of them now and you'll have four of them for homework. It's really not very much. If you want more, let me know. I know you're going to get bored here. Okay, so number one. System is PCL5 gas, double arrows, PCL3 gas, CL2 gas. Okay, they're all gases. They're all going to count. They give you the concentrations and they want you to solve it for KEQ. So product, product, reactant, product times product over reactant. They give you the values. These are moles per liter. It's literally, get out your calculator, plug and chug. Oh, those are two sig figs. KEQ turns out to be about 0.081. That's much less than one. The system favors the reactants. It doesn't favor the uh, forward reaction. It favors the reverse reaction. It wants to stay more in favor of PCL5. Easy peasy. Jump over to number four. Okay, so you've got SO2 gas, O2 gas, SO3 gas, everybody counts. Now you've got a couple of coefficients here, so KEQ they gave you as well, it's 800. That's a big value. That's a you know, much bigger than one, so we're going to favor the products here. It's going to favor the forward reaction. We're going to backtrack and solve it mathematically for the concentration of O2 at equilibrium. They give you SO2, they give you SO3. So, okay. It's SO3 squared over SO2 squared times O2. They gave you SO3 at 11. They gave you SO2 at 0.22. Those are both squared. My unknown here, O2, this is the equivalent of my X in the equation, if you will. And that equals 800. So I'm going to set that up as 800 over 1 and cross multiply. So 11 squared times 1 is just 11 squared. 800 times 0.22 squared times O2. And divide out, plug and chug, O2 turns out to be approximately 3.1 down to 2 sig figs. They gave me 3 sig figs here, but this is 2, this is 2. We're going with 2 sig figs. All right, that's pretty straightforward stuff. It will change on Monday. Number 7 is a totally different kind of problem. If you read closely, they start giving you moles. When we get into this, now we're into some icebox problems. This is a different animal altogether. 
All right, we'll we'll save that for Monday. I'm still waiting for quizzes from about um, oh I don't know maybe 20 of you. All right, have a good weekend. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Stay healthy.